Ladies, gentlemen, and you beautiful in-betweens, I'm Computer, and this is Doom Eternal. If you loved Doom 2016 and want more of the same, then I have some good news and some bad news. One, it's just as frantic as the earlier game, but they've made a lot of changes that have rubbed some people the wrong way, and in fact some of the changes have rubbed me the wrong way as well, so... I'll get into that later. But um, in terms of where we are right now, this is one of the changes you've got, and it's a hub area where you go between some missions, not all of them, but uh, quite a few of them at any rate. And once you've finished the game, you also get to start here, where you can go down here, and this is the next mission. We're not going to do that, as spoilers. Uh, instead, you can go here and select uh, all of the previous missions. In fact, you also have uh, cheat codes that you can use here. And there's a lot of them. These are the ones I've uh, unlocked in this particular playthrough, which is, well, a couple of hours into the game. I didn't want to use the one where I've uh, unlocked everything in this section. And that was one of the things I'm going to talk about later. Um, yeah, because this place kind of changes a little, and I figure that's actually just talking about it is a bit of a spoiler, so I'm just going to shut up about that now. Anyway, yes, um, let's go back here. Cheat codes. Um, beware about these. Be a little bit uh, careful, because it doesn't matter if you use them while replaying an earlier mission, but if you leave them on and stop that, and then start a new mission with them on, it will affect certain things in the game, like uh, certain trials won't be there. You'll still get all of the achievements and everything like that, but and that's actually something I should talk about first. If you have cheats enabled and do one of the story missions they're not going to be active you're not going to get infinite ammo or infinite lives or super armor or anything like that but in terms of uh, certain trials they will be on and the game will consider them to be on and you won't be able to do those which is or, well it was a bummer for me because i started one of the longer missions and had cheats enabled after playing with the mission select and well it was let's see it was one of those missions where you don't get back here instead you continue to another location so it's two missions in one sort of and that whole charade just took six or five or six hours for me to do uh, and I just, every single minute, I just wanted to get back here and disable cheats and then restart. But once you're in a mission, you can't get back here without finishing that mission. Which I feel they should probably change. Like uh, an abandoned mission. Reset mission just gets you back to the start of whatever mission you're on. I would like some kind of an abandoned mission. For those moments where you've messed up and want to fix things. One note about these cheat codes though. Um, while I was replaying a mission, uh, I noticed some pretty heavy graphical artifacting whenever I looked at the sky, and I'm going to put in a clip right now. And at first I thought my graphics card might be just dying or something. But the frame rate was completely constant throughout, so I don't think that was it. So instead I try like messing with all of the graphical settings in the settings. And uh, then I noticed that there was a kind of a yellow hue all over the screen. And then I remember that I had Sentinel armor active. I also had silver bullet mode active. Um, so yeah, um, that doesn't give you a hue, I don't think. Then I went to my main playthrough where I have all of the cheats and I enabled each one in turn and played a mission to see which one was doing it and it was Sentinel Armor. It's the only one that does it, 
that I've found, and uh, it's like you can overcome it. And on the other hand, Sentinel armor isn't all that strong. You don't become invincible, or uh, it's not like true IDDQD because you can die. It's just it just becomes a little bit rarer. So anyway, um, make sure you always deactivate old feats. Just press that twice uh, whenever you play story missions. Just I want to hammer that in because you don't want to waste five hours like I did. Although, I mean, it wasn't a complete waste. I did get a lot of upgrades. But I wanted to do the whole thing in just one sitting and I couldn't because I had to replay the mission again. But anyway, this little place, um, you can get a lot of uh, upgrades here and actually it's pretty massive to be honest. And all of these uh, like black and white ones are ones I haven't picked up yet. So let's go do that actually so you can see a little bit about the upgrade process. I mean, it's gorgeous stuff. Like, I've never been too much of a fan of the, like, gothic, what's the, uh, aesthetic, but this looks bloody brilliant. You can also unlock uh, new suits here, like that one. Not gonna do that because I prioritize, um, practical matters more. Um, uh, yeah, let's go with a weapon up. So you have two of these green slots. Do you like to... Would have available sentry batteries? Seven. Use one sentinel battery. Sorry, I can't talk today, apparently. And this little cinematic will play every single time and there's no way to... Um, like, skip it. Which is a bit annoying, honestly, and there's more where that came from. Then we come in here and we have a Vega drone. And now we get to choose to upgrade one of our weapons. Do we want a microwave beam? Or do we want the arbalest or destroyer blade or remote detonation? I'm thinking I want the arbalest actually. And you have to hold down A to select the one you want. Hey, careful, careful. It hasn't done anything to you. It's not a UAC drone. And... You also have these guys. Uh, they give you... Suit upgrade points. And this is... I'm going to switch to a mouse now because it's far more convenient than a controller. Oh, and yeah, uh, if you have a controller connected and it has even the slightest bit of drift, like so, you can't use a mouse at all because the controller will always take precedent which is really annoying i'm gonna stop that now so yeah uh either unconnect your controller or disable it in settings or make sure you have a controller that doesn't have drift anyway yes we have 10 points over here and we can upgrade anything around here or well we can upgrade any one thing we want and maybe a little bit more um, exploration. Do we want to see more things? No, because that would be a little bit spoilery. Dash refills on glory kill. Yes. And... Faster weapon switch and mod swap. Mm, could be nice. Faster ledge grab. Not really necessary. Damage dealt against throws is increased. Oh, yes. And now we only have one. They disappear real fast. Anyway, uh, we also have... Actually, yeah. Uh, Sentinel Crystals will upgrade your ammo, armor, and health permanently. So you don't have to worry about that too much later on. Early on, you're very squishy, but and you have... Z well, not zero ammo, but... A lot less than you had in 2016's Doom. Um... Uh, in 2016's Doom, I think you start with something like 36 shotgun shells. Let me double check that, actually. Down, down here. Um, actually, no, you start with 60. 60 shotgun shells. And in this one, you start with 16. 
So yeah, you run out of ammo real fast, but then again, you do have options available to you to get back ammo a lot uh, more mm, reliably than you had in 2016. And uh, yeah, let's uh, actually upgrade two of these, I think. We, okay. yep, we have one underneath ourselves and down here. Again, with the unskippable scene. Also, uh, if you're using a mouse, I'm going to do that now. Uh, please forgive the noise. Here, you have to like move the mouse over to accept it, or you can just press space. Uh, which saved me a lot of hassle later on in the game. Wish I had known that early. Yeah, so these are your um, permanent upgrades. So you can get, uh, let's see, demons drop armor at faster rates. That's nice. Very nice, actually. And we get some ammo. Or as long as you're at max armor, all armor pickups contribute to blood punch. I'm going to talk about Blood Punch later, because it's uh, on my mind. Or we can upgrade either armor and health and get uh, potentially Flame Belch take less time to cool down. Uh, I don't really use Flame Belch all that often, I tend to forget it, so let's go with more ammo. Again, I need to hold down A. Use this. Also, this... Hey, cool down. Thank you. Also, let's move that instead. And again. Yeah, you get to see this uh, animation a lot. And it is as annoying as it is seeing it in this video. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk more about annoying cutscenes later on. Now, let's choose. Also, you can't actually, uh, you can't leave this screen, which becomes a problem if you're playing. There is a mode where you play the game and you can only upgrade one suit um, thing uh, or suit. You can only take one suit upgrade and you can only take one of these upgrades. And so if you accidentally, like, use one of these uh, pylons or whatever you want to call them you can't uh, exit out of it you have to like restart the entire um actually no restarting the mission would probably not do it because uh, your upgrades are saved on your character not on the actual level but uh, be that as it may it's annoying that you can't leave this you can't leave all of the other upgrades so let's anyway let's choose this now, and demons drop armor at fast rate. At least when they're on fire. I always expect him to break that crystal, like he did in uh, Doom 2016. Now we got those two, and they've g gone green here, so we can tell like the, which ones we've actually like picked up, which is very nice. Uh, oh. In terms of tra no. Uh, in terms of traversal, you have your double jump, you have your, um, it's not sprint, not, y you know what, I don't actually remember what it's called. Dash, probably. Anyway, um, and you can use it mid-air if you want, and you've already seen that you can uh, uh, get your dash back if you use a glory kill in mid-air. Anyway, um, let's go into Mission Select. Yeah, let's go with Cultist Base, and I'm going to play that with my main playthrough, because uh, I can show all of the weapons, because those are the, probably the things you're coming for, right? And, uh, yeah, let's go. And we're in. And this game is gorgeous. Also, um, not quite as well optimized as Doom 2016. 
but real close. I'm running this on a an Intel processor that is four years old, roughly. And I'm getting, let's see, 75 frames per second. Sure, I have a newer graphics card, but like it shouldn't be running as well as it is. Also, yes, I am running on Ultra Nightmare, which is like tough. So it should not be running as well as it is. Also, let's remove that because we don't need it. And uh, let's talk about controls. I'm using a controller right now. I did play through the entire campaign with a mouse and keyboard. And uh, it works, obviously. And aiming is a lot easier with a mouse and keyboard than it is with a controller. That's always going to be the case. However, the keyboard is the problem, frankly. Because you use WASD and then you're index finger is also using E, R, F, G, C, and V. And maybe B as well, I think? Maybe? Eh, might be. Uh, and obviously D. And then your pinky finger is using shift and control, and your ring finger or middle finger is using Z and X. Also, your index finger might be using, like, the number rows, or the number keys, to choose a different weapon. And it just gets a lot. It, it, it's not very well planned out. I would suggest maybe switching W, A, S, and D to E, S, D, F instead. So your ring finger and pinky finger can use U, A, and Z to choose, like, um, uh, which weapon mod you're using. Or which, um, what? grenade you're using, right? Uh, now the controller, though, to go here, uh, no, there we go. You can choose everything you want to be wherever you want it. And if you have an elite controller, all the better, because then your fingers don't have to move away from the sticks. The one problem I have here is Switch weapon and weapon wheel is the only way to control what weapon you're using. I would have liked to be able to switch uh, weapon uh, preview and uh, previous and next uh, instead of just uh, let's go, uh, this wheel. I mean, yes, time slows down, so you have some leeway, but... Mm, I'm not really a fan of this way of doing it, even though in this you can switch uh, um, what weapon mod you're using. So if we go to, let's say, this one and we want to use the sniper, you don't have to go through this animation. So that's nice and all, but I would have liked just previous and next, honestly. And, uh, but that might just be me and I might get some flak for which is fine. Now, in terms of ammo, uh, fully upgraded, you get 24 uh, shotgun shells, which doesn't last a long time. Uh, and there you see one of the new movement mechanics. Oh. Is that? Thank you. Yeah, you're dead. Let's see. You want to move over here? And um, as you see, no artifacts in the sky, and that's Let's see. here. Oh, wow. Please stop that. You can get close to these or like attached to these from very far away, even if your dash wouldn't necessarily reach. The whole way, uh, it there's a like magnet. Yeah, there's some magnetism going on, uh, so you don't really have to worry too much about uh, not attaching to it. Any time you see that, oh, we can look at over here as well. Means you can break through. Oh so, yeah, go nuts. 
And now we get some actual combat! Come on. And a glory kill. There we go. That's nice. Now then, um, yeah. I didn't expect that to be over quite so quickly. Um, certain enemies have uh, weak points. And if you hit them with certain weapons, like one of these, or, um, no, yes, one of these, or a lot of these, you will, like, disable some of their more mm, gruesome attacks. Not gruesome. Uh, it's not gonna, like, eviscerate you or anything, but... Well, this, um... Uh, do thing. I forget what they're called. I'm not gonna bother finding out anyway. Anyway, yes, um, those guys have rocket launchers, and... If they're... F uh, ow, ooh, uh, stop doing that. Um, if they're a bit away from you, they can really mess up your day, and the spiders are even worse. I kind of feel like you could get all the way over there, but let's be nice to them. Hey, I have a flamethrower as well, and mine gives me armor. Rude. I always wonder. It's just an uh, indication for you to know that. Awesome. Anyway, yes. Um, some people have criticized these being like a little bit cartoony or a little bit more, a little bit too much like they were in Doom 1 and 2. I've not really had a problem with that. Uh, the only problem I've had with all of that is whenever you use the... Actually, let's go use that. Come on. Yep. And close. Is my time oh. Let's see if you're strong enough to survive this. Curse. This is something I have a little bit of a problem with. Also, now you can die because I've shown what I wanted to show. And it's all gone, of course. Hmm. Yeah, uh I'm gonna move away from you for a little bit. Yep. And of course, I need to kill. There. Now then, um, yeah, whenever you chainsaw someone, you get ammo. That's the way, that's your primary way to get back ammo. Um, secondary way is to find it lying around in the world not so reliable and uh, they don't really respawn in the world no i just lied uh, it does actually respawn in certain sections of the game in certain boss battles i've seen ammo that uh, respawned uh, after a short while it's a bit weird but uh, oh well this is doom uh, realism isn't really part of the whole also, you get to die, all of you. What? Let's get back some out. It's a little bit weird, but uh, I mean, you get over it pretty quickly. And in terms of. Um, yeah. Let's just move on. And. Oh, there we have. Oh. I can show you. Well, you guys. That's one weak point, and that's another. So now his uh, shots don't do nearly as much damage. Still do a little bit, though. You do not want to get near them because, well, actually, that's. Whoa. 
we have any more enemies? We, yes, we do. Also, you... <laughs> I stuck the, the bomb or grenade on his right gun, or for me the right, uh, his left, and the right gun got destroyed, which is a bit weird. Now you go die. I should have done that first. Oh, oh. Yeah, um, I find it a lot easier to use the controller, which is heresy in a Doom game, I know, but yeah. It's a lot easier than having to look down at the keyboard to figure out if you're pressing E or R or F or G and... Oh no, no, that was just the fuel reloading. Got it. So, just like um, a normal Xbox controller or an Elite one if you want to have your uh, thumbs always on the sticks. It's pretty much perfect for this game, honestly, and... Uh, you don't have any control over the dead zone in the settings, sadly. I think they should have added that. And also, like I said before, the, the controller takes control uh, no matter what you do. So, yeah. It's a bit annoying, that too. But I don't see a way to fix that, honestly. Like, you can't have the mouse always be the controller yeah uh there's no real good answer there oh hello bye bye Now, all of the... I do say now a lot. And then I don't actually talk about whatever I'm about to talk about. Anyway, yes. Oh. Yeah. It's a bit gruesome, honestly. Um, and very bloody. Also, the... The sound that comes with the blood punch, I think it's called. It can get kind of disrupted and sound a little bit weird. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's happened quite a lot to me. And Anyway, yes, I was talking about something other than this. Um, in Doom 2016, uh, demons were kind of standoffish. They would prefer to attack you in ranged combat. Some of them obviously didn't have any ranged weapons, and they would go straight for your throat. In this one, every single enemy wants to punch you. And you will get, like, piled upon over and over and over again. And that's why we have this now. Probably. So that we can escape whenever we need to, because there's way too many things uh, in the way. Although some enemies I've found do like to block you from doing that. For instance, there's one enemy that creates a shield. I've seen him, or her, it, probably not a him anymore. I've seen them uh, put them up right where I'm dashing to, just stopping me in my tracks and letting everyone behind me just pummel me to death. I've also seen uh, some teleporting uh, demons that teleport to my um, escape vector, let's call it, uh, stopping me and putting me very much in range of their attacks. And I think... Oh. Stop doing that, please. I think maybe... Because this happened mostly when I used the keyboard, I think maybe the game realizes that I can't use uh, strafe right. No, no, that's I'm just thinking way too 
much about this. So let's see what... Yeah, you do get uh, extra lives and you do need them, honestly. Let's see something down there that I'm interested in. Ah, armor. Uh, gory armor, probably. I think I can... Did I just pick up? Can I lure them here? He's probably not gonna attack me until those... Um. Oh. Uh, no, he went through the completely the opposite way. Well, let's see if we can snipe... Oh! There we go. Now he's gone. And everyone's seeing me. Okay. Yeah, he has... Um, that guy. He has some homing missiles right now. And if I do something like this... He only has one, and now he has zero. He still has... Oh, I think he has some rockets left. Maybe I'm wrong. Well... Doesn't have anyone, any more, anyone. Oh, hello. I did need some ammo, I think. Yeah. Like, even this weapon starts with a lot less ammo when you are playing. In fact, you get 60 rounds with this. And that's not nearly enough. But the, like, if we go into... Suit upgrades here. Um, ammo. Like, uh, in one of the screens when you choose, you see a number, and this is 200% ammo. Except, um, 60 divided by 3 is 180. And I have a max of 24 on this weapon, but it starts at 16. So it's not really 200%. But, uh, it's neither here nor there. Oh. Yeah. Every... Yeah, mm, let's talk about that, actually. A lot of people have likened this to... kind of a chess game. Where every enemy has its own... Um, and if, no, never mind, I'm not gonna finish that thought. To me, it's more like rock, paper, shotgun, no, rock, hip, paper, uh, scissors, mm, lizard, Spock, I think. Because, yeah, if you like this weapon, you can get by using it, but it will be especially good against enemies like the three we the trio that we just saw but also if you try to use it against some enemies they will just roundhouse kick you to death um or let's say you really like the shotgun and you can get a lot out of the shotgun but there are certain enemies that will just wreck your day if you're using it against them so it's more like Shotgun beats uh, the Revenant, I think they're called. No, never mind. Spiders, at any rate. Arachnostrons, at any rate. And the Mancubus will also be quite handily beaten by this. But some other ones just... It's not a good idea. So you need to switch up which weapon you're using quite a lot. And also... Yeah... There is another problem with this system as well. Um, because you run out of ammo so often, the, the game has an auto-switch setting that you can enable, where if your uh, weapon runs dry, it'll switch to another weapon. 
That doesn't always work, is what I've found. Where you have, you know, you're holding an empty weapon and you want to attack something but can't and then you have to find a weapon that doesn't, like, doesn't, that isn't empty. And sometimes it chooses your BFG. And before you know it, you've launched one of these and you only have two shots. It says 60 at the bottom there, but that's energy. 30 energy per shot. And that's because we do have this, which uses one energy per shot. And it has happened in my main playthrough where I ran out of ammo with, let's say, this gun, and it chose the Unmaker, which is this thing. And I wasted some BFG ammo because this is, like, it's powerful. It'll kill pretty much anything quickly enough. But the, the weapon you really want to use is the BFG, right? And if I have 59 ammo, I can only shoot this once. Whereas if I had 60, I could shoot it twice. And that's double. Uh, unless you're, you know, in case you're not very good at math, like me. And yeah, so... There are a few bugs in the system, but other than that, like, uh, other than that and the graphical bug that I encountered in the sky, or the skybox at any rate, it's a really, yeah, it's a very stable game. I did encounter once where the game suddenly told me that it couldn't save, for whatever reason, on this map actually, and... It just told me, like, yeah, it can't save right now. And I kind of wanted to go to bed at that point, so I was hoping for a save point. And then I just felt like, oh, well, if I leave now, where do I even get to start on this mission? Or will I start back at the base? And I just had to finish the entire thing, which took uh, an hour or two, I think, at the time. Because I was still on ultraviolence at that point, I think. And yeah, um, there was another time where I lost my internet connection. Actually, no. The game lost its internet connection. I was still connected to Steam very much. And I could still, like, watch YouTube and all of that. But Doom Colonel thought that, no, you don't have an internet connection. So none of anything works anymore. So you should just stop playing, basically. Because if you don't have an internet connection, you don't get any of the milestones, which I think I can show you here. Basically, just achievements with another name. Um, I'm not gonna keep doing that because spoilers. And you can also not do challenges, which is something I haven't talked about. These will give you Sentinel batteries, batteries, which will let you upgrade your main base, your home base. And uh, for instance, here we have acquire one Sentinel crystal. I haven't done that in this uh, mission right yet. It's a little bit later. Or ignite four demons with a single blast of the flame belch. I did do that. Or destroy an arachnotron turret, which is its weak point. And I did that with one of these. Oh, yeah. And, like, most of the challenges are pretty easy. There are one or two that were... that I needed to replay a mission, like, twice to do. Uh, especially when the pinkies are involved. Then you also have weekly challenges, which give you experience points, which gives you nothing concrete in the game, but more cosmetics. And, uh, yeah. Now, we've talked we haven't talked about runes, though. And that's another way to customize your build, sort of. And that the three I'm using are launch a glory kill from much further away, which is really nice. Because if you see an enemy that is about staggered, and you want to get to there, and there are some enemies in between, you can just face right through them. As long as you can see your target, it's fine. And remain staggered for longer, which is a way to survive, essentially. And then we have enemies killed by uh, blood punch, 
but that's what it's called uh, shockwave drop health which is really nice but could go with uh, survive one death blow and briefly slow down time that's also saved me quite a lot especially in one life mode and then we have gain a speed boost after perform yeah you can just pick and mix however you want and then here these are all permanent upgrades as are these and then you can choose whatever like uh, mod you want to use though switching mods is recommended um a lot although i mean the double shotgun doesn't have that so yeah and then we have the map Whew. i've talked for quite a while now and uh yet if there's anything here Kind of looks a bit necrony, doesn't it? A warhammer. Oh well. Also, oh yeah, this is. Mm, I'm not quite a fan of having lives in a Doom game. I think they did that a lot better in Doom 2016. I understand why we have it because, like, combat is so hectic and you do die a lot, and it would just be. I don't think they should dumb down the combat just to remove lives. I think this works pretty well, actually. It's just, uh... Mm. It works well, but I kind of like dislike it on, just, uh, on principle, I guess. Which isn't the best <laughs> defense for uh, an opinion. But there are also another... Thing. Actually, yeah, let's not talk about that first. The UI, oh, oh, there, has some interesting choices that you can just change. Like, uh, you have presets for, you know, exploration, notifications, combat, none. And you can just turn on and off basically anything you want on the HUD. So if you don't want anything, you get nothing. You don't even get an ammo counter, which would be kind of uh, detrimental, I think. But let's go with... What was that noise? Um... Well... Well, there we go. And now we get a lot of just information that we don't really need. And we can turn on, let's say... And you can turn off on that, and anytime something happens in the game, we'll get a notification on the left or in the middle, and we get a compass, which is kind of nice, actually. Uh, but you can turn off basically anything you want here, and that I really love. More games should have that. Now for the negative bits, and it's not about the UI, by the way. It's about the story. Honestly, you get a lot more backstory about the Doom guy and the world and hell and where he's from and why and how humanity got a hold of Argent energy and yeah, there's a lot there and it's also quite a bit of retconning, honestly. And at the end of uh, Doom 2016, Doom guy is in a pretty precarious situation and then at the start of Doom Eternal he's free and coming to Earth in his main base, you know, the Fortress of Doom, I think it's called. And it's not explained how he got there, just that eight months have passed. Uh, we're supposedly getting DLC that would explain what happened between then and now, but it just kind of feels a little bit weird. Uh, also, you get a lot of cutscenes that are not really necessary, I feel. Um, like, for instance, the, the bit with the Sentinel batteries at the Fortress of Doom. That could just be something you could skip or just, like, click, click and done. And anytime one of these doors open, for instance, you'll get a 
small five second cutscene that shows you this door just opened and it could have been done better because you can't skip those cutscenes you can skip big ones the ones with, where the story is told but you can't skip the small ones that you actually do want to skip and it happens all the time also there was a nice thing with doom 2016 where the game had just all the cutscenes were in first person so you felt like you inhabited doom guide's armor sort of you felt like no let's not phrase it that way um his hands his and his gestures and everything he did really conveyed just how angry doom guy was and just how single-minded he was in his pursuit to kill demons whereas here you get third person cutscenes where you see him interacting with other people and demons and it's kind of jarring honestly and in most of those cases it's not even necessary but I guess that's an aesthetic choice that they went with what I disagree with but not enough to say that I hate the game for it like it's it's okay it's fine it's another differing opinion I guess but I think I would have liked to see a more coherent vision like you got in Doom 2016 you need some armor uh, can I oh yeah here's that okay and you closed. Nope. And this is also kind of why... Oh, all the way over here. Hmm. Uh, why you need health, uh, lives. Now, if you just jump down here and die, you don't actually lose a life. You lose armor and then you lose health. And if you die too many times that way, you will lose a life. But... That, so I have some leeway. I need it. Right. Hey. Oh wow. Um. No, come on. Up oh, there. Thank you. What else do? Oh, you. I should probably be looking to my left and right as well. Oh boy. Um, eat it. Thank you. Oh, it got too close. Um, you know what? They're getting a little bit annoying now. Oh, that was all of them. I thought there were more waves. Oh well. Yeah, um... Kind of feels like a waste to use them on the, uh, the BFG on those guys now. Hmm. Yeah, so... All in all... Um, all in all, I love the game, honestly. All its faults... Like, it, it doesn't compare to how good the game is. Uh, that's not a good phrase, but I'm gonna go with it. Like... On the other hand, there's one thing I would like to address, and that is, I played Doom 2016 in one sitting, all of it, and it took about 14 hours, I'd say, 15 maybe, uh, and this, I couldn't, I just could not play this in one sitting. After two hours, uh, my hands just kind of hurt, and I was just mentally exhausted because combat is so very frantic and I mean your threshold might be a whole lot higher than mine but it could be an issue and I think it took me about 39 hours total to complete the game by which I mean uh, getting all of the weapon upgrades 
and all of the suit upgrades, including these, and all of the runes, and all of the codex, and all of the challenges. 39 hours. Uh, which is a lot, which is a good thing, but if you can only play the game in two hour st stints, it gets a little bit... Uh, yeah. And that's pretty much why this uh, review is so very overdue. Then again, that is the name of the series, so you don't have a lot to complain about there. But yeah, um, 39 hours. I think you can probably do that in a lot less if you're not a completionist like me. And uh, yeah, but damn, this is a gorgeous game. Yeah. Like, even with all its faults, I do love this game. So, with that, ladies, gentlemen, and you beautiful in-betweens, I've been Computer, this has been Doom Eternal. Check it out, and I'll see you next time.